questions, as Jen said, uh, feel free to type them in throughout and we'll be taking those questions at the end of the webinar. So there's never been a better time to start using Presto on the TTC. Its availability is becoming more and more widespread. And so perhaps you're someone who's used Presto a few times and you want to know a little bit more about it. Maybe you've never used Presto, you don't even have a Presto card. And you're not sure where to, how to get started. You don't understand when to tap, when not to tap. You don't know how transfers work. So we're going to be covering all of that today, the basics about how to get your hands on the card, how to get started, loading it with some funds, and using it on the TTC, as well as other transit systems. And hopefully this, is going to, this webinar is going to get feeling a lot more comfortable about using Presto on the TTC. Just to say that we actually have a prize draw today. We're giving away 10 Presto cards. Each is worth $20. And that prize draw will be taken from all the people who attended this webinar. So uh, if you're one of those lucky winners, we, we will be emailing you after the webinar to let you know that you've won one of those Presto cards. And hopefully you can use that to start using Presto and hopefully even transit as well. So what is Presto? It's basically an electronic payment system, or in other words, a smart card that allows you to um, pay for your transit fare. And it's available across all 11 transit agencies in the GTHA and Ottawa. So for you as a customer, this brings a number of benefits. First up, it means there's no need for you to carry tickets, tokens, passes, or cash anymore because Presto takes care of all of that for you. Now that it's integrated across all local transit in the GTHA, including Go Transit, if you're using more than one system, transit system, you don't need to carry exact cash for those two or more different systems. You don't need to carry different fare types. Presto will take care of all that for you. It also comes with balance protection. And what that means is that the funds that you have on your card are protected if you ever lose your card. So to give you an example, if your pocket is full of 10 tokens and you lose those 10 tokens, those tokens have gone for good. If you have a Presto card and it has $30 of, of funds on it and you lose that, when you get your replacement card, providing your card is registered, and we'll be talking a bit about registering your card later on, you'll be able to get that $30 back on your replacement Presto card. Another benefit is that the balance on your card never expires, so you don't have to worry about trying to use your balance by a certain date. And your card also comes with an auto load capability, and this gives you peace of mind that you always have enough funds on your card to uh, make sure you're going to be able to get onto transit. And we'll be, again, that'll be something we'll be talking about a little bit later on in the webinar. And it also gives you eligibility for some fair discounts on participating transit services. So, for example, a cash fare with TTC is $3.25, a fare with Presto on um, TTC is $3. And likewise, if you're traveling on Go Transit, a, um, you're better off the fare is cheaper by pay, paying for it with Presto rather than just buying a, a normal uh, Go Transit ticket. So if you haven't got a card already, uh, you need to get your hands on one because um, this is the key to using Presto is to have that card. And there are several places where you can buy your Presto card from. First off, we have um, Gateway Newsstands and you can find these in most of the TTC subway stations. You can also purchase a Presto card from all Go stations, select the shopper's drug marks, online at prestocard.ca where you can get it delivered to your home, at the TTC's Davisville Customer Service Center or by calling the number on screen. We will be sharing these slides with you after this webinar, so don't feel the need to write down this link, but you can see there is a link on the bottom of the slide there. And if you visit that link, you can find all these different service outlets where you can buy Presto cards from including uh, identifying all those, um, those select shoppers drug marks where you can purchase Presto cards from. So you've decided you're going to go out and buy a card. How much is it going to cost you? Well, the Presto card itself costs $6, and this is a non-refundable fee. If you're purchasing from anywhere other than Gateway Newsstands, you must also purchase or, or load a minimum of $10 at the same time and or a monthly transit pass. If you're purchasing your Presto card from the Gateway Newsstands, it will cost you $20. And how that breaks down is that $6 of that $20 is your um, fee for the card, and the remaining $14 is the actual balance. So that's the, those are the funds which you can use for your transit fare. And as you can see on the right of, the, of this screen, 
We actually have the two different designs for the Presto card. So on the bottom there is the green card, which has uh, basically been the design ever since day one. And on the top is the new black design for the Presto card, which I believe launched this week and can be purchased from those select shops drug, drug marts. Um, there is no difference in how the cards operate. They're exactly the same. It's just literally a um, new design. So which TTC Fair products are available on Presto? Well, first up is the Adult Monthly Pass. This is what you might be more familiar with uh, as the Metro Pass. It costs exactly the same as the Metro Pass, so $146.25. The equivalent for the Senior Monthly Pass is also available on Presto, as well as the Single Trip. And as we said, that costs $3 with Presto, rather than a cash fare of uh, $3.25. Um, also coming in the future will be a day pass, a weekly pass, and post-secondary student monthly pass. And just to note on the day pass, it's actually going to transition to becoming a daily cap. So what that means is that customers will not pay more than a predetermined amount throughout the day. Uh, so that's great. So it means that if you start using the Presto card lots during one day, you're not going to be charged any more than a set amount. So some of you might be wondering a bit more about how you go about purchasing the TTC monthly pass on Presto. So you can do it online through prestocard.ca. You can see a screenshot of that on the right. Or through those select shoppers drug marks. And you can purchase a monthly pass from the 24th to the 5th. So I'll give you an example of what this means. If you're wanting to purchase an October TTC monthly pass from your Presto card, then you have today and tomorrow to make that purchase. If you wanted to purchase a November monthly pass on your Presto card for the TTC, you have from the 24th of October to the 5th of November. And if you're a senior um, and you want to get the senior monthly pass, then you have to have your card type set to a senior fair type. So some of you might also be familiar with the TTC's uh, monthly pass discount programs. So first up is the MetroPass discount plan or the MDP. This is going to be transitioned to Presto in the future. Uh, it's not available on Presto right now. So if you are part of the MDP, just carry on doing what you've always been doing. You will keep on receiving your Metro Pass. And when that time comes to transition uh, from the digital Metro Pass onto Presto, you'll hear from the TTC, and then that is the time to make that change. If you are just wanting to buy that one-off monthly pass or Metro Pass, then you can do that on Presto, and you can, you can do that now, as we, as we spoke about on a couple of slides ago. The other monthly uh, discount program is the Volume Incentive Program, and this is something um, that is done through the employer. So as the MDP is where the individual signs up for a 12-month commitment, the VIP is done through the employer. So if you purchase or get your, Presto, uh, your Metro Pass each month through your employer, this is most likely what your employer has in place. So for now, just just like the NDP, continue uh, obtaining your card every month through your employer as you do uh, until further notice. So I can talk about now about managing your account. So maybe you've bought your card, uh, maybe you've used it a few times, but you want to sort of uh, manage your account on, on an ongoing basis. So we recommend that you go onto the prestocard.ca website and you register your card and set up an account for yourself. And this brings with it a number of benefits. First off, it allows you to protect your balance, as we spoke about earlier on. It uh, makes sure by registering your card online, it ensures that if you ever lose it, uh, you're able to protect that balance and the funds on it. You can set up auto load, and this is something that I really recommend. It's something I have with my own personal Presto card. So from, in my case, if my balance on my Presto card ever drops below $10, it automatically uh, loads with another $20 uh, via my credit card. So this is really good. It gives me peace of mind that whenever I'm about to get on the transit, so the subway, uh, streetcar, bus, or go transit, I have enough funds on my card to be able to get onto, onto the transit and not have that embarrassment of not having enough, enough funds on the card particularly good you know, if you're in a maybe last minute rush trying to get to the airport or something and you don't have that last minute panic of whether you have enough funds in your Presto card because you know they're there through auto load. Also, if you need to submit expense claim reports through uh, for your employer or if you need to demonstrate your transit purchases for tax purposes, through your registered um, account online, you can also obtain transit usage reports and a record of your transaction history. 
So maybe if you use your card a few times and it's time to put some more, more funds on it so you can carry on using it. So this is when you come to loading your card. And as I said, I think auto load is a great way of doing that on, a, on an automatic basis to ensure you always have funds available on it. But if you don't want to make that commitment to auto load, then you can load up your card on, on an as needed basis. And there are a few ways you can do this. One is to do it through the self-serve reload machine, so you can find it on most TTC subway stations, and you can see a demonstration of one there on the right. You can do it online through prestocard.ca, at the TTC's Davisville Customer Service Center, at a GO station, or by phone using that number on the screen. Just to say, if you are loading a card online, there may be a 24-hour waiting period uh, before those funds are fully available in your account. But if you're loading up your card through autoload or at the Davisville Customer Service Center or a self-serve reload machine, then your balance is available immediately. You may also want to check your balance from time to time just to make sure how you want to see how much is on your card. So you can do this anywhere that you load your machine, your card. So for example, you can use those self-serve reload machines. You can see one in the picture on the bottom right of the screen there on the TTC subway stations. And if you're not at the TTC, you can also use one of the balance checker devices. Uh, you can find these at ghost stations and uh, other local transit outside of the TTC. And just to note, if you have been using a card a lot during the day or have, you have just recently topped it up, then it may take up to 24 hours for your balance to, to fully show an update on the system. So I'm now going to hand over to Caitlin, who is going to give you a demonstration on the Presto website and then talk to you a little bit about how to use um, Presto on the TTC and other transit systems. Thanks, Stuart. Um, so we'll just go through some of the main features of the Presto website. You can very easily manage your account through this website. We'll just log in, and this is what the landing page looks like. And right from here, you can very easily load funds onto your card. And you can see that you have two options for loading funds. You can load a set amount using this dropdown. Or if you'd prefer to add a transit pass, you would click here, and you can see there are several uh, monthly passes available from different transit agencies. You can buy the TTC pass here. So it's very easy to load your card. Um, you can also check your up-to-date balance right here in the top left. And I'll just go through some of the other important features. So um, auto load, if you'd like to set up auto load, as Stuart said, it's a way to ensure that you always have the funds on your card when you need them. You can see I've set my auto load um, to load $30 onto my card whenever the balance drops below $10. But you can change those settings at any time right here. You can also um, check your card activity. So this will show you a history of your, your transactions, and you can easily filter um, based on the transit agency you've used. You can also filter by date, and you can filter by the type of transaction. So that's a very good way to check your records. And if you are needing to report your transit usage for income tax purposes, you can easily um, access a transit usage report through this page. And just to highlight one more thing, if you lose your card or it gets stolen, you can easily report that here and set your preference for how you would like your balance to be transferred. So those are the main features of the Presto website. And now we'll just talk a little bit about how Presto works in different situations. So Presto is very uh, widely available on the TTC. You can use it now on all buses, all streetcars, all wheel-trans vehicles, as well as at every subway station, there is at least one entrance where you can use your Presto card. So it's very well integrated throughout the network. We've had a lot of questions come up lately about where to tap your card and how that works. So we'll just talk a little bit about that. If you're on a bus, you can see that there is a card reader always at the front of the bus. So that's where you tap your card when you board the bus. Um, Streetcars, you will see fare payment devices at every entrance now. So you can tap your card at the front or at whichever entrance you're using. If you're taking the subway, there are one of two things you might see. Um, in the middle picture there is a subway turnstile with a Presto fare gate attached. So you would tap your card on that green box when you're entering the subway station. 
You may also see, pictured to the right, the new Presto Fairgate, and these are being installed across all TTC stations. Um, you can check the construction schedule online. One thing to note is when you're using um, a bus or a streetcar or the subway, you only need to tap on when you're boarding or entering the subway station. Um, there's no need to tap off. So how are transfers going to work with Presto? Well, they work very much the same way that they do now. They're valid for two hours for one continuous trip. So that means no stopovers or changing directions on the same route are allowed. You do need to have that one continuous trip. But they work the same way whether you're taking um, a subway, a bus, or a streetcar. So what you would do is tap the card reader when you board, and you don't need to take a paper transfer. The Presto system will work out that transfer for you. When you exit your first vehicle, there's no need to tap off. Um, but when you transfer to the new vehicle or to a subway station, you would just tap the card reader again. And as long as you are within that two-hour window and part of the same continuous trip, your card will only be charged once. And we realize that there have been some issues with transferring using a Presto card, and Heather from the TTC is going to talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. So some of you may be aware that there are TTC buses that operate outside of Toronto into York Region and Mississauga. So you can use Presto to pay your TTC fare, but when you're crossing that fare zone and you need to pay a second fare, you will need to use another payment method. So there are several ways you can pay that additional fare. Um, if you're in York Region, you can use the YRT Viva Pay app. You can also use cash, tickets, or a TTC token plus a cash supplement. So that's something to be aware of if you're traveling outside of Toronto on a TTC bus. So Presto also works uh, very well when you're using Go Transit. You can use Presto now on all Go trains as well as on all Go buses. And it's a very easy and convenient way to travel. It makes transferring very seamless and it can save you some time. So there's no longer a need to stand in line to buy tickets. You can just simply get right on the bus and tap your card. So it's a very uh, efficient way to travel. So it works a little bit differently um, on Go Transit compared to the TTC. So when you're using Presto on Go, you do need to remember to tap on and tap off again when you exit. Um, if you don't tap off, the Presto system calculates your fare based on the distance you've traveled. So if you haven't tapped off, it will assume that you've, tr you've gone to the end of the route and you will be charged that fare. So just remember to tap off whenever you exit the train or the bus. For buses, you can tap inside the bus. There's a card reader at the front. So you would tap that device when you board and tap off again when you exit. If you're taking a train, you'll find the fare payment devices at the train station. And sometimes they're in the station. You can also find them on the platforms. And they look like uh, pictured here, these green devices. So just look out for those when you're taking the train. If you're a post-secondary student, just be aware that there is a discount if you're taking Go Transit and paying with Presto. So how that works is you need to get a Go-approved student ID. And this could be either uh, your university or college student ID card, or in some cases, you need to get a special student ID issued by Go Transit. So be sure to check the Go website to see which ID you need. Once you've got that card, you can take your ID and your Presto card to a Go station, get your card set to a student set, uh, fare setting. And then every time you tap your card, you're going to save at least 18% on your Go Transit trip. So if you're a full-time student, be sure to set that up for yourself. You can also use Presto when you're taking the Union Pearson Express. It works very much the same way as Go Transit. You need to tap on when you're boarding the train and tap off again when you exit. Um, again, if you don't tap off, you will be charged to the end of the route. One thing to note about the Up Express is the fare payment devices do look a little bit different. So you can see in the top right, the fare payment device is gray rather than green. So make sure that you tap those machines when you're using the Up Express. 
And if you're interested in learning more about how to use Presto, we just wanted to point out a few very helpful resources. You can find some great video tutorials online. Presto and GoTransit both have YouTube channels, and you can find some really excellent how-to videos about different aspects of Presto. So be sure to check those out if you'd like to learn more. So now I'm going to hand it over to Heather from the PPC, and she's going to speak a little bit about what's coming up next for Presto. Great, thank you. Um, so we are still very much continuing with the Presto rollout across the TTC. As Caitlin said, we do have it available at at least one entrance of every subway station on our streetcars, our buses, um, most of our wheel trans vehicles. We are missing. Um, our sedan uh, contracted taxis. So that's something that we're working with Presto right now uh, on to get Presto card readers in the sedan taxis that service our Wheeltrans customers. So uh, customers who would be picked up by a sedan taxi should still continue to have uh, tickets, tokens, and cash available in case uh, the vehicle that arrives doesn't have Presto. Um, the other thing we're very much uh, in the middle of at the PPC right now is uh, completing our Fairgate uh, installation at, the, at our subway stations. Uh, so we are heading into or in the middle of construction at uh, 25 remaining stations that don't yet have Presto. So these would have been the stations that initially got the Presto card readers on the turnstiles back in 2016. We are now uh, going into those stations and uh, taking out the turnstiles at both the main entrance and automatic entrances, those are the entrances without our collector booths, and putting in our new paddle style fare gates. When all is said and done, um, in the middle of next year, uh, I guess er early spring, uh, we will have our fare gate construction complete and uh, that's the time that you'll see uh, more and more features, uh, fare payment options and self-serve reload machines really um, infiltrated across our system. So, so later this year, uh, we will be installing new uh, self-serve reload machine or self-serve machines at our subway station entrances. The, these machines, customers will be able to use them to purchase um, a Presto card, purchase, um, eventually purchase a limited use paper Presto card, which will be good for a single ride or a few multiple rides. Uh, they'll be able to check their balance. They'll be able to load passes from these machines. So customers will be able to do m much more at our subway stations than they, they can currently do now. Um, in terms of uh, some of the things we've touched upon, one of the areas that Stuart talked about was loading your card. Uh, customers, in addition to all the places he mentioned, can also load uh, their cards, both their balance and passes at, shoppers, at the sh Shoppers Drug Mart locations as well. Um, the other thing that we will be working towards uh, introducing for our customers uh, is cross-boundary payment for YRT and MyWay, concentrating on YRT or York Region Transit first. Um, currently, customers that use TTC buses north of Steeles will, are not able to use their Presto card uh, north of Steeles on TTC buses. They can only use their Presto card within the boundaries of Toronto. So those customers should continue to uh, pay like they would have if Presto card readers were not on TTC buses. So that would be the regular fare plus a supplement. Um, some other things that we will work on, as mentioned, were, was the introduction of uh, an MDP equivalent. We will have the daily maximum. We will have a uh, post-secondary option on Presto. We will introduce uh, this limited-use paper Presto card that's targeted at both social service agencies, school boards, um, customers that, you know, infrequent travelers or visitors to the City of Toronto using the TTC. So there's a lot still to come within the rollout. Um, and, you know, it's a very exciting time right now for us at the PTC. Okay, thank you so much, Stuart, Caitlin, and Heather. Um, so we'll be moving into the question portion. So we have a list of about 13 questions so far. So if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat box and we'll make sure um, we try and get to them before our time is up. So we have about half an hour. So hopefully we can get to everyone's questions. So 
I'll just start here, um, and then whoever thinks they're best to answer it, I'll pass it to you. Um, so the first question, uh, is there a date for the discontinuation of the Metro Pass once Presto is introduced? So it's Heather from the TTC. So we are still working around timing of Metro passes and, and the, discontinuing our legacy fair media, as we call it. So that's passes, uh, tickets, tokens, uh, and cash, but we'll still be able to use cash at, at machines and on surface vehicles. So um, we're looking at the m middle portion of next year, uh, where we'll start to phase out uh, legacy fair media. We don't have a particular date that has been determined yet, uh, but the, the period of which th this will happen will be we will stop selling tickets, tokens, and passes uh, before we stop accepting them. So we will provide uh, our customers with more than enough time so that they know what's happening and have the opportunity to use any unused tickets or tokens specifically up before the deadline. Thank you. So we'll go to the next question. Um, so this one is about the VIP program, the Volume Incentive Program. So some organizations have the VIP program for current Metro passes. Will Presto have a similar program for these organizations? Heather again. Um, so we will be discontinuing the VIP program and uh, the option that those customers will have uh, will be to either sign up through the new uh, MDP equivalent, which we will be calling the 12 month pass, um, or they could purchase uh, the regular um, monthly pass that we have uh, on Presto. Again, time, time frame still being determined in terms of when we're going to phase everything out, but uh, as soon as we have that information, we're going to communicate it to our uh, VIP customers and all of our customers. Okay, thank you. Um, so there's another question here. Um, it says, how does national travel work with Presto? So I don't know if you're referring to the fact that Ottawa also has the Presto system, um, but I can just say off the top that it's just tr the Greater Toronto um, in Hamilton area and Ottawa that have Presto, you can't go further with Presto beyond that. Um, but is there anything else to add about Ottawa? Like say you have a Presto card here, um, does it work the same in Ottawa? Okay, so I'm getting nods, yes. So if you have Presto here, you can go and use the system in Ottawa as well, but that's it. That's the, those are the only places right now that Presto has. Yeah, and vice versa, if you live in Ottawa, you can use your Presto card here in Toronto. Um, and just a little add on about um, the region as well. So there is that issue of transfers, but if you're on a TTC bus between Toronto and York, for example, but if you're starting your trip in York, you can use Presto. I'm pretty sure all, no? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm lying about that. No, no, sorry, but I mean about York Region Transit. Yes, okay, so yes, with York, York Region Transit, Durham Transit, My Way, all of those transit systems have Presto capabilities, so you can, if you start your, your trip there, um, then you can start with Presto, but then you'd have to use the, the additional fare to get back on to TTC to finish your trip. So just so you're aware, if you are only doing trips, say, in York Region or only in Durham, you can use Presto there as well. Um, okay, so next question. If your funds go into negative, will there be a penalty? Will you be able to still take that trip? So if your card is registered, I believe you can go into a negative balance, but you will be, I think there's a small fee to, to when it does come back up. Uh, so yeah, you, you'll, you have to have a registered card. You can drop to a negative balance to pay your single fare. If you don't have enough money, you will be charged a 25 cent fee once your card goes into the negative balance and you'll need to load funds in order to use for further travel. Great. Um, so the next question is, with Presto, does it mean that all your trips are tracked? Um, yes, you'll be able to see all your trips in that um, card history area of the website. So your trips will be tracked through that. I'll add to that that um, some of the reason why there's uh, the tracking mechanism is that it does help also with service planning and, and that kind of information. So um, it, it's helpful for those purposes as well. And I can add about on the 
website. So you have to register your card to have your name attached to the card. So if your card isn't registered, those trips are recorded in the system, but they don't know who took them because it's an unregistered card. Uh, we do encourage you to register your card. So if you lose the card, you don't lose your balance because if your card is not registered, you cannot get that balance back. It's like losing cash. Um, but that's the difference. So if you register it, um, then you can go and check your trips on the online system. If it's not registered, those trips are being tracked anonymously just so the system knows who is traveling where and what volumes are happening in the system. Okay. Um, I have a question here about Bike Share and Presto and TTC. So I already have a Bike Share membership. I saw online that you can get first time Bike Share membership for 50% with Presto. So just a clarification is actually 40% uh, now this year. Each year it's going, it started at 50, now it's 40. Um, starting January 1st, it will be 30%. So they're declining that, um, that discount, but it is 40% right now, which is still great. Um, but I'm already a member, so are there other deals to combine with TTC? So yes, the discount of, um, with Presto for Bike Share is only for new Bike Share members. So they want to know if there's any other discounts to combine Presto and TTC and Bike Share. Uh, so there are no plans at this point, but maybe in the future it's something that we can certainly continue to look at. Great. Um, so next question is, how does concession work after it is applied to the card? Um, I don't know if the person who asked that might want to clarify that a bit further, but I think do you mean once you add money to the card, what happens, I'm assuming? So once you have a concession on your card, and as long as you don't lose your card, uh, that concession stays with you. So, um, and that travels with you through all of the agencies that use Presto. So uh, it's a universal concession that you're, you're signing up for. Um, and once it's set, as I said, as long as you don't lose your card, it, it's your concession and you can continue having it on your card. So this would be things like senior discount or student discount. Okay, great. Um, so what if I mistakenly tap off in the TTC bus? Will you be deducting a fare two times? I'm sorry, what was the first part? They would be charged twice um, because it, 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 uh, if it's outside of the sort of window of anti-passback, then it would be a live tap again. Okay. So what if it's the big city? No, they would have, they would get charged. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so to clarify, make sure on TTC buses you just tap on, you do not need to tap off, same with subway, same with streetcar. Um, but when you're on the GO system, you do need to tap on and off. So that's the main difference. Okay, next question. Can multiple people use the same Presto card? For example, my spouse and I take the TTC bus. Can I tap twice to pay two fares? So the answer is no, related to the last question. You each need to have your own Presto card um, to both be able to ride the, the bus or the subway system at the same time. Um, Next question is, do all TTC subway stations accept Presto? Do buses accept Presto? Um, and they miss the tap off on rule. So the answer is yes. Um, all, subway system, all subway stations have at least one gate that has Presto, at least one entrance. Um, and then all uh, buses and streetcar are also Presto enabled at this point. Um, and again, the tap off rule, only tap once on TTC to get on, go is on and off. Um, okay, so can the settings be changed on the card? So say someone no longer needs the card, but their senior parent needs the card, can this be done or do they have to buy another card for that purpose? Uh, they can change the settings on a card any time. The only thing they need to bring with them is a proof of government issued photo ID for uh, seniors or any concession that you're setting um, so that you can, you're confirming that that then person is being tied to the, or the concession is being tied to that person on the card. Um, next one is, uh, is there a Presto Fair Check app available? So I think maybe the best you could do, so I'm getting no, there's no specific app, but you could pull up the online system on your phone and do it that way. So um, you would still have to log in and check your fare that way, um, but that's, where it is right now. Um, and perhaps part of the question might be about a mobile app instead of a physical card. Is that in the works? 
like having a, a way to pay with your phone as opposed to a card? So I can't answer that specifically for Presto, but certainly it's something uh, that that may be looked at, um, but that would be ha have to be driven by uh, at the Presto MetroLink then. Um, so next question is, they love their Metro Pass because it's unlimited trips all day. Um, anything like that available on Presto? Yes, so we do have a Metro Pass equivalent right now on the Presto card. Uh, we It's uh, for sale for both uh, adults and seniors. It's called the TTC uh, Adult Monthly Pass on Presto or the TTC Senior Monthly Pass on Presto when you're looking for it on the, the website or at Shoppers Drug Mart to load it on your card. It, it costs the same as the current adult and senior Metro Pass and provides the same unlimited travel that uh, you would be used to on your Metro Pass. The only caveat is if you are uh, a new Presto card, uh, if you need to purchase a Presto card, you will be required to pay the $6 and then plus the 146 uh, for the adult fare or the adult pass and 116 for the, the senior pass. Great. Um, so we just have another uh, question around clarification of where the Presto machines are located on buses and streetcars. So um, just because I don't want to say something that isn't true, but for buses and streetcars, where are they? I know they're at the front of the vehicle. Do buses and streetcars also have them at all doors now? Okay, so all doors on buses and streetcars have Presto machines. And Heather wants to just add something. So while uh, the buses have them at the back door, it's still... Uh, front door entry for buses unless the bus is operating on a streetcar route at which point then it becomes all door boarding um, and customers can use the back uh, card reader uh, but the the reasoning behind having the uh, second card reader at the back of the bus was um, future planning so we wouldn't have to go back and install a card reader if there was a decision for all door boarding on bus routes uh, but also in case a machine is uh, not available at the front of the, the bus, you have the secondary one that you can tap. Um, so just a clarification around transferring on TTC. Um, so when that happens, you're going to tap on the first vehicle you enter, um, and then you leave that vehicle. You do not need to tap again on that vehicle, but when you enter the next vehicle or subway station, that is when you tap again. So they just wanted some clarification about when you tap for a transfer on TTC. Um, and then a question around children. So will children under 12 need a Presto card to enter the subway? Yes, they will. Um, and that's because once we finish the uh, fare gate work across our subway system, and then we, in the middle of next year, start to transition to our new station model, which will have our collector coming out of the booth and us introducing our new customer service agents, um, we'll no longer have a collector booth aisle in our stations where anyone can sort of freely walk with a, a collector verifying fare. So um, children under 12 will require a Presto card. Um, it will not deduct a fare. We have, you have to have the child concession set on your card. Um, but with children being uh, under, under 12 being free on the TTC, um, their card is just merely activating the fare gate at the station. But they do have to have the concession set on their card. Um, and did you say a timeline on the limited use Presto card? Do you know when that might be rolled out? So we're looking at uh, mid next year for um, having the ability to introduce that. Again, no definitive timeline has been uh, decided upon yet, but uh, sort of mid 2018. Um, so this one is about Go Transit. Um, how do I override my automatic destination setting on Go Transit? So I can start, and then maybe if you have anything to add, um, on the machines that you tap, there's a button that you need to push that says override, and you push that, and then you tap, so it will act like you don't have an automatic destination setting. I've been hit by this before, where I didn't realize I needed to do that, so it's definitely important to do that if you have an automatic setting there and to, to most people who have automatic settings is because they commute daily from say Oshawa to Toronto and it's a very regular trip um, so they set that up so they don't have to remember to tap off every time but if you're going to do anything else besides that trip you do need to push that button and do you guys need to add anything more to that? I would just say yeah everything you said is right but um, those tutorial videos which we shared some links of in the slides they actually have an example of what to, how to do that process so if you do want to 
find out a bit more, then yeah, go to those um, those uh, videos and watch those, and I'll show you how to do it. You do still need to tap off, though, as I understand. Thank you for that clarification. Um, and a question around TTC officers, how do they check proof of payment if you don't have a transfer? Uh, that's a great question. So all of our enforcement officers carry handheld devices that uh, they can query a customer's card and uh, see the evolution of their journey and whether they are paying by their e-purse or um, with a monthly pass. So another question about if they no longer need their Presto card, um, can they get their money back that they have on the card? We're just going to check that quickly because we're not exactly sure, so we'll come back to that question in a minute. Um, the next one is, um, so someone worried about the transfer issues between, say, a streetcar and a subway station or a bus and a subway station. I worry, they worry that they're getting charged a second fare. They want to know if there's any other way to check whether they've had a double fare charge besides going into their account. Is there any other way to check or do they need to check their account to make sure they haven't had a double fare? I'm not sure if you can do it at the self-serve reload machine. It's probably best to go on to the, to the website and check it that way. Uh, sure, I, I will, um, but let's get back to the other question around um, Presto cards and if they no longer want to use them. Um, so you can return your card, but there is a fee that you will be charged, um, and then you have to surrender your card as well. Um, so if you no longer require your Presto card but you have funds on it, um, it can be refunded. Um, there's an administration fee of six dollars for the cost of the card and using the system it's not not refundable if your balance is less than fifty dollars you have to complete a form which is available on our TTC website but also from uh, customer service outlets that uh, sell presto cards a processing fee of four percent uh, will be refunded and applied to all refunds and then it will take four to six weeks upon receipt at the presto office for everything to be complete so in terms of transfers, um, while, it, while we've been spending a lot of time talking about you, you tap onto a bus and then you uh, tap into a subway station at valid transfer points or similarly from a streetcar to a subway station, there are some anomalies in our system right now as we continue the rollout uh, of Presto where, um, for instance, at Davisville Station we have uh, active construction going on for the fare gates and uh, as a result of us having to close the concourse level um, we've had to shift the way people are entering our uh, entering the station at Davisville so we have customers that are entering the station uh, through our main lobby and then walking into the bus bay going down a set of stairs into the concourse level and then down to the platform um, as a result of this, we've had to uh, reroute some of the buses that go into the bus bay at Davisville. So, for instance, the Glen Karen bus number 14, which would normally go into the bus station or the subway station um, and drop people off in the fare paid area, is now dropping customers off on the street. Um, as a result, it's not a valid transfer point um, because the bus, when it drops someone off, outside of the subway station is uh, is not recognizing it as, as a valid transfer point. So customers in that situation would need a paper transfer. We've communicated to our operators and our frontline staff about that. They should be reminding customers on that route to take a paper transfer. However, if, if there's a, a scenario where you believe you have been double charged based on uh, the way that you traveled or, or some part of your journey, um, you can contact the customer service center and, and they'll look through your travel history with you and, and determine sort of what case-by-case -case basis should happen to you, to uh, the way that your journeys have happened. Great, thanks. So someone's asking about the news they heard this morning about a discount for Presto users who use TTC and Go. Um, is there a discount for Toronto residents? So I'm not sure exactly if they mean something on top of what was announced, but I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. I think more about this announcement will come out on Friday, certainly uh, when uh, at the formal announcement. But um, it's right now, uh, as I understand it, it's it's 
go transit users who are coming into the city, they pay out their go fare, they get onto the TTC, it's then uh, the discounted fare of $1.50 and vice versa. So if you start your journey on the TTC but then transfer to go, it's the reciprocal fare between the, or co fare between uh, go transit and TTC. Oh, okay. Um, so the co fare idea is something that um, we've heard, but we don't have full confirmation of the details, would be rolled out to beyond just TTC, but it would be GO and Durham and GO and uh, My Way. So we don't know all the details of that yet, and hopefully more will be said on Friday when they make the announcement. Um, and then, uh, so another question, um, just specifically on transferring again, does it matter uh, which where you tap between, like if you tap on the back of a streetcar and then into the subway, and I'm seeing no. So it's just on that vehicle, um, just tap at whichever door you come through. Um, uh, when you get on the vehicle, when you leave, do not tap. When you get to the subway, tap at what other, what, whichever fare gate you go through, um, and that should allow the transfer to happen. Um, so with the override function, this is on Go Transit. Um, if I forget to tap off, how does the system know which direction I went in order to charge me? Example, if you were on the Lakeshore line. So my understanding is, is that it will just charge you to the end uh, of that line, assuming that you just took it to the end. Um, but it also, it says it charges you the furthest distance. So there is a possibility it may actually charge like on that line specifically or because okay. the system the, the furthest distance is say to Kitchener because it's a two hour ride so if you're on that line it would charge you all the way to Kitchener for example. Um, on the Lakeshore line if you're going uh, east it would charge you all the way to Oshawa even if you got off at Ajax so it's good to remember to tap off because um, it's hard to prove otherwise if you don't do so. Um, so uh, Tokens, there's a question about tokens. Are they going to be eliminated? Um, and they say we use them to reimburse staff or participants for travel at the city. Um, so this is maybe related to that other, yeah. So yes, tokens will be eliminated. Um, and the, the replacement, so to speak, is the limited use paper presto card. Um, and so people who would bulk purchase such as school boards or social service agencies, places like that, that would uh, provide tokens to their clients or customers uh, would be able to bulk purchase the limited use paper presto card and, um, and hand these out to people as well. Um, and I just had a bit more clarification from a colleague about the co-fare system. Did you... It's Kyle from the City of Toronto Smart Commute. Uh, on the co-fare, uh, our understanding is the TTC and uh, Go Transit announcement that will be formalized on Friday um, is the last region to do a co-fare agreement. <clears throat> so uh, currently, like Durham Transit, York Transit, uh, My Way, Mississauga, and others have a co-fare uh, local transit and Go, Go Transit uh, agreements in place. Um, they range from 70 to 80 cents. So if you are hopping on a, a local transit bus in Ajax and you're heading to the, the GO train station, you're charged that regular fare for um, that local transit authority. But when you uh, tap on at the GO train station, it recognizes that you were taking local transit um, to the GO train and will uh, credit you um, the difference down to in Durham Transit, for example, at 75 cents is the co-fare. Um, so that's already in existence. What the announcement on Friday will be uh, formalizing the TTC and the Go Transit co-fare agreement. Okay, great. Um, one clarification I wanted to add too about the override function, or just even tapping on and tapping off on Go Transit. If you tap on at, at Union Station. Uh, Presto has no idea which line you're about to enter, so it will charge you, if you don't tap off again, it will charge you to the end, the longest uh, route, which is Kitchener, I believe. So you will get charged all the way to Kitchener, even if you entered onto the Lakeshore line and forgot to tap off there. So if you're starting at Union, um, it will charge you to the longest one if you don't remember to tap off. So it's really important to remember to tap off. Um, okay, so a question about sharing Presto cards among family members at different times. Is that something that's okay? Yes, as long 
as adults are sharing with adults and children are sharing with children and they're not traveling together. So yeah, a, yeah, a key piece of that. So say you share it um, with a member of your family that would qualify for a senior discount or vice versa. An adult can't use a senior's card. And if a senior uses an adult's card, they're going to be charged the adult fare. So that's something to consider. Uh, um, if you have a monthly pass on your Presto card, do you still need to tap? And the answer is yes. Um, because they, do you want to explain that further? So yes, we want you to tap uh, just because you're getting used to tapping your card. Um, but it's also uh, so that, uh, again, our transit enforcement officers can see that your card, uh, your your pass has been picked up, that it is being used, and again, it's, it's to help with service planning. Okay, um, so uh, which cities are now using Presto? So I think we briefly don't know this, but we can go again. Um, and so why has Toronto decided to start now? Um, so it's been more than now. I think it's been a few, a while. I can't remember exactly when all this started here in Toronto. Um, but I can say from what, what I know, it's the greater Toronto Hamilton area. So you're looking at Durham, uh, Toronto, York, Halton, Peel, and um, uh, Hamilton, but specifically in uh, Halton, there's just the Brampton Transit that I believe has it, is that correct? And then Ottawa has it as well. Um, and do you want to speak further about the reasons why TTC wants to do this? So this is uh, a big part of the modernization of our system. Uh, you know, the beauty of the Presto card really is, and uh, Stuart touched upon this earlier, um, only having to carry one card and then the seamless trans transportation across the region um, that use it, it, that use Presto is uh, is certainly a benefit. But from a from a TTC perspective, why we're doing it, it's uh, you know it's part of the modernization and uh, eliminating a, a variety of tick, you know fair payment options and, and consolidating into one is just uh, you know a, a good model to follow. Um, so a question, and I think you touched on this maybe a little bit, but um, with Go Transit, once you reach uh, a certain amount of money in a month, they start discounting your fares, almost like a monthly pass in the end. Um, is something like that going to happen with TTC? I remember you saying something about daily, but is there monthly as well? So we won't have uh, a monthly, but we will have uh, the daily maximum. So you'll get to the point where it is, uh, you'll get to our uh, I think it's around the $12 threshold. Once you reach that uh, that part of your travel, uh, from that point on, you won't get charged anymore in that day. Um, we will also eventually have a weekly uh, pass as well. Um, those details are still being sorted out, or I guess it's more a weekly threshold similar to the daily max. You'll get to the portion of the week where you've traveled so many, so many times per the week. Uh, from that point on, you won't be charged. We only have a few minutes here left, so I'm going to try and pick ones that we haven't really talked a lot about. There's a question is, um, will they still be able to use cash if they don't want to get a Presto card? Yes, so cash will still be accepted uh, on the system, certainly on our surface vehicles. And uh, while we won't have collector collectors in the booth after the middle of next year, um, the fair media vending devices that will be at every subway station entrance uh, will accept cash and turn that into uh, a Presto card or the limited use paper Presto card. Um, so something about taxes here. So for the funds added to my Presto card, what is qualified for tax purposes? Do I have a tax receipt by the end of the year? I believe there's something about how often it's used, but does anyone know any more details about that? Okay, so we're being told in 2017 that the CRA removed the tax benefit, um, so it's no longer something um, that you can claim. Uh, so that would be a CRA decision um, about that. Um, and then there's something here about, so back to the TTC and GO discount. There, Some folks are wondering, is there any kind of discount for just TTC users? I know that the reason, or one of the reasons they brought in the TTC GO is so that it encourages people who are coming in by GO um, to feel like they can then hop on the TTC and it's a little bit less to encourage people who are outside of the city not to drive into the city because of fare being a barrier. Um, so if you want to expand on that further, Heather? 
So when when customers pay with their Presto card, they are paying the uh, token fare price. So cash fare is three twenty five for adult exam for as an example. Um, if you use your Presto card, you're paying a three dollar fare. So you are getting a cheaper fare option uh, when you do use the Presto card. Okay, um, and we still have a few questions here. Um, for those that uh, need to go, you're welcome to. We can keep answering a few more questions maybe, and for the recording, um, you can always look back and, and hear the final answers. We've covered a lot of ground though, which is great. Um, so with Up Express, do I need to tap on and off with the Presto card if I travel to the end of the route? And the answer is yes. Does anyone want to go more detail on that? I think it's just, it's, it's good practice to always just tap on and off. Um, to both make sure everything's done clearly on the system and they can keep track of where users are entering and um, exiting, uh, but then also just to make sure that you are charged the right fare and then they don't charge more. Um, okay, and do, 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 sorry, I'm just going through all of them to make sure I can get new ones. Um, so does a Presto card have to be registered to check the balance and load at a machine? So if you have a Presto card, do you need to register it to use those machines to load them, or can you just use it without being registered? You can just use it without being registered. Certainly the, the benefit of registering your card is that if you lose it, um, your balance is protected. And similarly, if you have a monthly pass on your card, your pass is protected as well. So um, if you were able to, uh, sorry, you, you can get a new card and your pass would just be uploaded back onto your card or your balance would be put onto the new card. Um, specifically for the paper cards that you're talking about, can more than just one fare be added to the paper card? We are looking at a few different options. We haven't finalized all of the details for that yet, but uh, yeah, there'll be a few variations of, with the paper pressure card. Um, can one sell back unused tokens once they're no longer usable? there will be no refunds on tokens. So uh, we will be giving people a number of months grace period so that those people who have a number of uh, tokens uh, can use them. And then if they don't uh, use them in that time frame, there will be no refund. Um, if you get on a streetcar and you have no balance on your Presto card, are you allowed to load it right on the spot? No, so uh, the card readers on our surface vehicles do not allow you to load uh, money onto your card. So if you don't have a balance on your card, you would be required to uh, pay your fare by an alternate uh, form of media. So a uh, ticket, token, or cash. Um, a few other quick ones here, hopefully. So um, yeah, so last week, oh, so um, uh, wait, where were we here? Do, do, do. So someone's uh, wondering if um, at the terminal itself, whether it can verify a charge, if something was charged versus not. So in transfer situations, has there been any talk about having a different color light show up, for example, uh, when they do a transfer? Yes, it's something we have uh, talked to Presto about. It, it would certainly uh, be helpful to have, and we're looking into it uh, with the Presto team. Um, and uh, maybe one final one here. What are options if a Presto tap machine does not work on the TTC vehicle and all you have is that Presto? So if the machine is not working, it's not the customer's fault. Um, we uh, would uh, advise the customer to board the vehicle um, and then pay at their destination. So if they're, if they're getting onto another vehicle, they could tap on that vehicle. Or if they're entering a subway station, uh, they could tap in the, in the subway station. But the, if they enter uh, a vehicle or similarly, if the fare line was down across the entire subway station that they're entering, again, they would be able to enter the station or vehicle and then pass to tap at their destination. Okay, I might just give two more in because we have two more ones that haven't been done and then we'll, we'll end it there. Um, so someone wants to know um, why if they do get charged twice sometimes uh, on the same vehicle or like went through transferring, how, how come they can't use the same card twice for two people? So two reasons for that. The first would be uh, the virtual transfer that's written to your card is really applicable for one traveler. Um, but then also there's an anti-pass back to our uh, system so that uh, you know if you rub a machine within five minutes, you're not getting charged again uh, or a fare gate 
at the subway station, uh, but it, it's it's also aligned with the the transfer and, and being valid for one person. Um, and just someone wants to know why they should register. We talked about this a bit, um, but I think my my number re reason for registering is if you lose the card, you don't lose the money. So if you're someone who has 30 bucks on this Presto card and you lose it, if you don't register, if it's not registered, you will lose that money. So I think that's probably the number one reason to register. But it also allows you to have a lot more functionality with your card. You can add uh, discounts like if you're a student or a senior. Um, you can also keep track of your own travel. So if there was something like a double charge, you could actually ch check that and uh, be able to talk to the TTC about that as well. So I think we got all of the questions, so that's great. I'm happy about that. Um, and if others have questions after this, um, you can always email myself. So Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R dot McGowan, M-C-G-O-W-A-N at Toronto dot C-A. Um, we'll send it out in the email we send out as well, and we can try and get your questions answered uh, after this. Um, we, we are recording this webinar, so we will be sending out a link in a couple weeks so that you can always go back if there was something that you felt like you missed. Um, and we thank you all for being here. We'll send you out more resources after this as well. Um, and yeah, happy Smart Commute Month. Uh, please take the survey. We'll send out the link as well. Uh, we'll do a, sur a survey about this webinar if you want to give us any feedback about that too. So thanks again, and um, keep in touch. We'll definitely be sending out more resources over the year. Um, our next big thing is a winter event around carpooling and cycling. Uh, so we'll be supporting that come the new year. So thanks a lot.